In Ontario, Canada, like uh, many places in the world, if you sell a vehicle to someone else, they want to change the name on the registration and put it in their name and drive it on the road. To do it legally, you have to get a safety inspection. This is an inspection done by someone at a garage who represents the government for what they decide is safe things and not safe things for vehicles. This doesn't include inspecting the motor, transmission or differential, just other things on the vehicle. Well, this customer of mine got given a free 96, or I mean 97 or 98 Acura. This one's something like a Civic. Because his son turned 16, so he dropped it off here for me to do a safety inspection on it. I'm not legally able to do legal safety inspections, but I know all the rules, so I can do all the work that's required, and then when someone does inspect it legally, it could be ready for the road. Why are you talking so much? Yeah. You're always getting in the way. So, I'll kind of give you a list of everything. It's probably true for most countries, these things that you got to check when you are putting a car back on the road again. First is the condition of the body. You, are you pointing that out? You can't have holes in your body in Canada. And that means exhaust could get in the car and maybe poison or suffocate the driver. You can't have holes in the floor. In some cases you're allowed to have holes in the front fender, maybe around the lip, but if you have holes in the top, then that means slush or mud or dirt could fly up on the windshield and make it dirty and that's not allowed. And if you have holes where the metal is jagged or sharp, that's not allowed either. If you have a pickup truck, holes are allowed in the box because the box won't allow any fumes to come into the vehicle so long as they're not jagged holes where someone could injure themselves. Of course, all the lights must work on the vehicle and the headlights at least must be reasonably aimed so they're not pointing in driver's eyes who are passing you the other direction. The battery must be securely fastened. About the only thing on the engine that has to do with the safety check or vehicle inspection is that the exhaust manifold doesn't leak and no gas is leaking. The windshield must have no cracks in the area where the driver or passenger view or where the wipers wipe and it must have no major chips and no major scratches that the wipers could have left if a wiper was broken. Of course the wipers have to work and the blades have to be in good condition so they don't leave streaks and they have to go back to park position when you shut them off. All the mirrors must function. If it has a rear window wiper or end washer, it must work. If it doesn't have one, it doesn't matter. One thing many people overlook is the license plate lights. They need to work. And backup lights. And that high mounted third brake light. All the windows must function and go up and down. Doors must open easily and close properly without having to be slammed because the hinges could be worn. Of course you have to lift on your doors a bit there's excessive hinge play, that's not allowed. All seat belts must function normally. Front seats must still be able to move back and forth and lock into position properly. Steering column can't be loose, like sometimes happens when it's a tilt steering column and the joint's a bit bad. Speedometer must work. Visors must be present in rear view mirror. Functioning horn. Functioning emergency lights. And of course tires must be in good condition. Tires have little bars running across the treads like this, little raised bumps and they're called wear bars. You're supposed to have at least 1.5 millimeters of tread sticking above the wear bars in pretty much the whole area of the tire. If the tire has broken belts that won't pass. Of course rotor condition must be good. Sometimes rotors are look good on the outside but are really bad on the inside and pulsate a lot when you're braking. The brake pads must have enough material still on them for the friction pads. The rotors also could look perfect, but they could be too thin to be considered legal. The rear brake drums or rotors must be within legal size limits, not too rusty or too scored. The rear wheel cylinders or front brake calipers must not be leaking. The adjuster system must not be seized. The handbrake, the handbrake must function properly, and that means fully released when you put the handle down and fully engaged on each wheel when the handle's up. 
exhaust leaks must be checked. The best way to do that is start the vehicle up, put your hand on the tailpipe and listen for hissing or exhaust sounds coming out elsewhere. You're just so snuggly, aren't you? A muffler and catalytic converter must be present. The gas tank must not be leaking, so you have to look for black or brown stains on it. Fuel lines and brake lines must not be too rusty. Things like stabilizer bars have links on the ends, and the links must not have, be loose or have play in them, and that's on the front and rear vehicles. Not every vehicle has rear stabilizers. Now often on older cars, there's a steel bumper insert behind the plastic, and dirt and debris builds up from the rear tires that collects in the pocket in there, and your rear bumper is completely rusted off. So if that's <laughs> true, you have to replace your bumper too. The law says bumpers must be securely fastened and be structurally sound. Shock absorbers also are not much part of the safety kitty part of the safety check except that they must be securely fastened at both ends. It's not in Ontario it doesn't matter if they're leaking. If the vehicle is licensed, you can take it for a drive and feel if it's not pulling too hard to one side, listen for noises in ball joints and control arms and stuff like that and listen for noisy wheel bearings. You then jack the vehicle up and grab the front and back side of the tire, push hard on both sides and you're trying to wiggle it to feel for play to check if there's inner or outer tie rod end play. Then you grab it from top and bottom and you're wiggling it back and forth hard and feeling for wheel bearing play. On Hondas and some other vehicles your next step is to put a jack under the lower control arm well the wheels already in the air and jack that up part ways take the pressure off the ball joints then you get a pry bar in between the spindle and the lower control arm pry on the ball joint at the lower see if there's play no play is legally allowed and then at the top here on the upper ball joint you can get a pry bar in there against the spring and pry up and down and see if any play there and see if there's any play there and none is allowed the rubber brake flex lines must be inspected for cracks or frayed areas. On Hondas especially, the rubber control arm bushings, like this one's torn. On many Hondas, uh, on the attachment points on the frame or up here where the strut is, they're in bad shape, but most vehicles have rubber control arm bushings. Hondas have them in the rear too here where the control arm attaches to the dog leg or behind the dog leg on the body. They're much larger ones. Of course springs can't be broken. Very often there's just a little piece missing on one end that's hard to notice. Shock towers must be sturdy and not all rusted. Sometimes on Chrysler vans they all rust around here on the attachment point. Brake fluid must be at a reasonable level. Power brakes if it has a must function. If it has power steering, it can't be excessively leaking. The brake calipers must not be seized, and the slider mechanism that allows them to adjust must be functioning properly. If it has ABS brakes, the ABS light in the dash must not be on, and the ABS system must be functioning. Many cars have a small subframe that the motor is supported on in the front suspension and the subframe is not allowed to be bent from the car hitting a curb or to have any rust perforation and the attachment points where the steering rack goes on must be in good condition. The car must may also have frame rails underneath the floor and stuff like that and the frame rails must be not rotted out and in great condition. If the gas tank is held in with straps, the straps must not be too rusty and be both in place and be in good condition. The filler neck that runs down to the gas tank must not be rusted through. If it has a rear window defroster, it's supposed to function. The front window defroster must function correctly too on both sides. High beams must work and gas pedal must not stick. Braking must feel normal and not too mushy, I mean the pedal not go down too far. The tires can't be mismatched sizes, or for example a snow tire and a summer tire, one on each side, that's wrong. The airbags must still be installed and not detonated, and the airbag light cannot be on on the dash, which means their system is faulty. 
So that's about it. Other than having some accessory random cattage on your car, I think that's about all you have to check in Ontario on your vehicle before you take it to a garage or if you purchased it and want to see if it's worth fixing or not. Now you know. This took me about uh, 15 minutes to check out and sometimes it takes a bit longer but it's not a big deal. All you need is a jack.